TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli counter-terrorist special operators arrested a senior Hamas terror cell responsible for efforts to develop rocket fire capabilities in the West Bank. Following violent clashes by Eritrean migrants in southern Tel Aviv, the government pledges to implement a number of measures to include deportation. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu during a trilateral summit with leaders of Cyprus and Greece reveals prospects of normalization with Saudi Arabia. Israel's war on terror persists while Jerusalem prepares for prospects of wider escalation. IDF, ISA and Border Police Special Operations Forces conducted counter-terror activity throughout the West Bank districts of Judea, Samaria and the Jordan Valley overnight, during the course of which a total of 16 suspected terror operatives were successfully apprehended. During operational activity in the village of Tamun, Suspects opened fire and hurled explosive devices toward the Israeli forces who responded with crowd dispersal means. In tandem, in the village of Kubar, a violent riot was also reported, to which the Israeli forces responded with crowd dispersal means. And while damage was caused to a military vehicle, thankfully, no injuries were reported. Separately, during today's morning hours, the ISA directed IDF commandos and border police special operators toward a residential structure deep inside the Palestinian refugee camp of Jenin. The three wanted suspects included senior Hamas operatives who were allegedly responsible for a long list of terror attacks in recent months. According to a joint statement by the IDF, ISA and border police spokespersons units, during the operational activity, a number of armed militants were spotted attempting to flee the scene, while other militants opened fire toward the Israeli forces who responded with live fire. Hits were identified among the Palestinian militants, while in contrast, no injuries were reported among the Israeli troops. It is worth noting that one of the apprehended suspects, namely Abdullah Hassan Muhammad Tzubeh, was known to be the terrorist responsible for efforts to develop rocket fire capabilities in the northern Samaria region. Meanwhile, in the Lebanese capital Beirut, Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah hosted the head of the Iranian proxy, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, Ziad al Nahala, and the deputy head of Hamas's political bureau, Saleh al Aruri, amid increased efforts by the three internationally recognized terror groups to unite in their common cause against Israel. According to Hamas spokesman Hazim Qasim, the trilateral meeting aimed to express the deep-rooted coordination between the factions of resistance in the region and the backdrop of Israel's threats to assassinate their leaders. Moreover, the meeting sought to make it abundantly clear to Israel, amid the escalation in the West Bank, that it stands in the face of a united front of a resistance axis that has the capacity to reach a joint decision if Israel were to act upon its threats. Turning to southern Tel Aviv, where violent riots erupted on Saturday when supporters and opponents of the Eritrean government clashed against one another, prompting renewed deliberations in Jerusalem over prospective deportation. Similar to violent events that were cited in Norway, Sweden, Germany and elsewhere around the world, the Eritrean government of President Isaiah Safwarki sought to hold gatherings for its expat supporters, marking the country's Revolution Day. Nevertheless, opponents of the Eritrean government opted to quell these celebrations, despite commitments made to police. In recent days, we coordinated matters related to developments in Eritrea. There was an intention by supporters and opposers of the regime in Eritrea. We decided to allow regime supporters to hold a rally at a club at the Master Street, while a demonstration by regime opposers would take place at Janet Heretzifim in a manner that would have created a wedge between both sides. Both sides agreed to our terms and demonstration licenses were granted accordingly. To my regret, since the morning hours, neither side fulfilled their commitments. They didn't fulfill the commitments in accordance with the licenses granted. 
They arrived here during the early morning hours with the intention of forwarding the rally. We prepared with reinforcements since the early morning hours and even during the night, since we received reports that they intend to burn the club where the pro-regime rally would have taken place. In any event, while we prepared from the morning hours, hundreds of Eritrean expatriates arrived and evidently took a decision to thwart the pro-regime rally at any cost. The police district commander further highlighted that the opponents of the Eritrean government were responsible for starting the clashes, winning 30 police officers and over 140 Eritrean nationals. Meanwhile, in response to the violent riots, Israeli Prime Minister B. Netanyahu held a special ministerial committee in Jerusalem yesterday, during which a series of measures were adopted including administrative detention, revoking work permits and allocating more funds to remove thousands of Eritrean nationals from Israel by the year's end. Moreover, ahead of departure to Cyprus for a trilateral meeting between the leaders of Jerusalem, Nicosia and Athens, Prime Minister Netanyahu emphasized that a red line was crossed. What happened yesterday in Tel Aviv crossed a red line. First of all, I send my wishes for a full recovery to the police officers who were injured. Today, at the special ministerial team that I established, we sought several quick measures, including the deportation of supporters of the regime who participated in these disturbances. Of course, they have no claim to refugee status. They support the Eritrean regime. If they support the regime so much, they would do well to return to their country of origin. Netanyahu went on to address his trip to Cyprus. I am going to meet the leaders of Cyprus and Greece. I remind you that in 2016, we established the Trilateral Eastern Mediterranean Alliance. This alliance has been a major success. It has led to a major improvement in economic relations, including in tourism. Millions of Israelis have visited Greece and Cyprus up to now, has led to an improvement in security relations. And, of course, we are also discussing the energy issue. On the issue of energy, there are decisions that we will have to make soon as a result of our having carried out another revolution, the extraction of natural gas from the sea. By the way, like with the fence, our political rivals also opposed this, as did professionals, but we insisted. This provides us not only with the natural gas needs of the State of Israel, but also the ability to produce for Europe. We have several routes for production. In this meeting, I will concentrate on two of these routes, the Eastern Natural Gas Pipeline or a liquefaction plant in Cyprus, which would allow us to produce a massive amount of gas for Europe, which will also fill the state coffers. These are the issues that are on the agenda. Meanwhile, in the Cypriot capital, the Israeli premier initially held separate bilateral meetings with the president of Cyprus, Nikos Christodoulides, and Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis, respectively. Subsequently, the three leaders held a trilateral meeting, which focused on a wide range of issues. This is, without doubt, a dynamic, strategic alliance between partners of democratic values with shared objectives, and which invests in a joint vision of stability, prosperity, and security in our region and beyond. During uh, our discussions, we review the progress achieved in multiple areas of cooperation, which have been developing all these years. We reaffirm our aim to intensify collaboration in fields such as energy, security, defense, economy, as well as uh, academia and our diasporas. Well, speaking about collaborations on erecting an electric connector from Israel via Cyprus to Greece, as well as methods to deliver natural gas, which Netanyahu spoke about before traveling to Cyprus as well. The Israeli premier also highlighted prospects of Jerusalem normalizing its relations with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia that would essentially open the door to new substantive opportunities. I think there's something else that could develop, and we discuss it at great length. Uh, there is now the possibility that we might have the expansion of the Abraham Accords to uh, normalization uh, with uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, all three countries view that as a great possibility, but they also see that this could lead to a connection between India, the Arabian Peninsula, uh, Israel, Cyprus, Greece, Europe. 
there is a geographic connection, but it could be also something that would lead to uh, uh, many, many rewards for our peoples and for our countries. Uh, so I think we all see eye to eye on that. Greek Premier Kyriakos Mitsotakis, for his part, highlighted his keen interest of having India join the trilateral forum. We had again today the opportunity to discuss uh, uh, many fields of, uh, of common uh, interest you touched upon, uh, many of those, but also the, the potential of um, uh, expanding uh, this trilateral partnership uh, to possibly include in a 3 plus 1 format other countries, not just the US, with which we are already working very, very closely, but other countries such as uh, India, which, uh, as the Prime Minister of Israel pointed out, would have a natural uh, interest in looking towards uh, uh, the West and expanding its uh, geopolitical but also trade footprint uh, in our uh, part of the world. Prime Minister Mitsotakis further stressed that deepening alliance between the three countries while underscoring the vital importance of close security collaboration between Athens and Jerusalem. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to point out that TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry. Therefore, if you're blessed by productions and would like to help support keeping TV7 Israel on air, please consider making a financial contribution. You can do so by donating via our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. Separately, I would like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shavua Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.